The field of gene and cell therapy is rapidly advancing with treatments including gene addition, RNA therapy, gene silencing, cell therapy, and gene editing. Some are already FDA approved and available at sites around the world to help specific patient populations, while others are being studied in clinical trials to see whether they are safe and effective at treating or preventing certain disorders. These treatments all aim to target the cause of the disease on a genetic level, and there are a variety of ways to approach this. A gene is made of DNA and contains the instructions for a cell to make a specific protein. While DNA stays in the nucleus, RNA carries these instructions to the cytoplasm where they are used to make proteins. Proteins are the building blocks of how we function, so they make a big impact on our health. First, let's talk about gene addition. A gene variant may be causing not enough of a specific protein to be produced, or the protein produced is not working. Gene addition adds in a properly working gene that has the instructions for the cell to make more of the specific protein. A vector, which is often a virus, delivers the working gene to the cell's nucleus. The viral genes are removed to ensure the vector cannot cause disease and are replaced with the working gene. Because the added therapeutic gene will then reside in the nucleus, it has a greater chance of being permanent and is only administered one time. Gene addition isn't the right approach for all disorders. Another approach that may be explored for treatment is RNA therapy. There are different types of RNA therapeutics because there are so many different ways that RNAs can affect cell functions. For instance, messenger RNA or mRNA therapy is designed to produce more of a specific protein similar to gene addition. However, sometimes gene variants may cause a protein to be made that has a toxic effect and leads to disease symptoms. In these cases, microRNA, interfering RNA, or ASO therapy can be used to silence the faulty gene so the protein is not made. ASO is a very short sequence of RNA or DNA that can be delivered to cells to change how a protein is produced. These stay in the cell for a limited duration and may need repeated doses to maintain a therapeutic effect. Some RNA-based therapies can be delivered using a viral vector. In this case, the instructions or DNA to make the RNA therapies would be given directly to the cell and would be a one-time treatment. Cell therapy is another approach and can be used to target a specific cell type to treat disease. Here to explain more is Dr. Daniel Bauer. Cell therapies could be based on blood stem cells or immune cells for disorders like sickle cell anemia or certain forms of cancer. Many cell types have the potential to be modified. Depending on the type of cell therapy, the cells used may be from the person's own body or from a donor. Genetically modified cell therapy removes a person's own cells from the body. The removed cells are treated by adding the working gene or modifying the affected one. The treated cells are then returned to the body. This type of treatment combines components of gene and cell therapy. Since the cells are provided with the corrected genetic material, the therapy would likely be longer lasting and may be given one time. This is only a snapshot of all the ways gene therapy, RNA therapy, and cell therapy are being applied to help treat different disorders. There are decades of research that experts continue to build on with new findings and developments happening every day. For more information on these different gene therapy approaches, or if you're curious about gene editing, please visit patienteducation.asgct.org.